All right. Is the Y in the problem? All right, well, I'm going to leave it like this. So I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it like this, um, even though I did write down the problem wrong. But I think, oh, it's Y squared. Oh, this one's Y squared. OK. That's actually not too bad. OK. So now, oh, it's XY squared. <sighs> Ready? These are new notes, but I'm basically just going to go through four examples for you. Um, so you guys can write these down, and this will be a part of, um, obviously, your homework in for tonight for you guys to go ahead and complete. Huh? Yep, this will be 8-5. So when we're, we have covered simplifying, we covered graphing, we covered vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, um, simplifying, multiplying, dividing. Now we're going to get into adding and subtracting. And just like with fractions, number, fraction numbers, Adding and subtraction is usually the ones that people avoid because it takes a little extra steps. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot add fractions unless they have the exact same denominator. When they have the exact same denominator, we just apply the operation to the numerator. But if they don't have the exact same denominator, we have to find a common denominator. So we look for the least common denominator. And the least common denominator is also sometimes called the least common multiple because we want to find an expression that both of our denominators evenly divide into, right? So if I was thinking of 1 fourth plus 1 third, the least common denominator or least common multiple would be 12, because 4 divides into 12 and 3 divides into 12. Does that make sense? Well, in this example, we need to choose a, an expression that 5x squared y and 10x squared or 10xy squared divides into. So the best thing I like to do is just break it down. Instead of looking at the whole expression, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at 5 and 10. What is the smallest number that 5 and 10 both evenly divide into downhill? What is the smallest number 5 and 10 both divide into? 10. And if you have trouble with that, just start listing the factors of 10 and 5. And what you guys see are not the factors, but the multiples. You see that 10 is the smallest multiple that they both of both 5 and 10, right? So let's just change this to common multiple. Maybe it'll be easier for you guys. 10. Now we want to find what is the smallest multiple that x squared and x both divide into. Again, if you have trouble with that, list the multiples of what x squared and x divides into. And what you guys see is x squared divides in. Because we can always divide variables. Because what do we do when we divide exponents? We subtract the powers, right? So x squared divides into all those. x divides into all those. So the smallest x term is x squared. And then y and y squared is going to be y squared. So now that we have identified our least common multiple, now we have to multiply by a multiplier to get that. So our least common multiple is 5x squared y squared. Well, I have 5 times x squared y. So therefore, I need to multiply by 2y and the top and the bottom. The reason why we want to multiply on the top and the bottom is because we want to produce what we call equivalent fractions, a fraction that's equivalent but um, is in a different format. And then over here, all I need to multiply is by x on the top and the bottom. Does everybody see what I have done? OK. Then I now obtain. 12y over my least common multiple plus 5x over 10x squared y squared. Now they have the same denominator, so I just apply the operation. However, these are not like terms, so I'm just going to leave it as an expression over the common multiple. That's done. See, capiche, comprende? If you're asked for the constraints, 